<lacht> Oi! Oi! <lacht> need us to call you a cab? Do you need to... Do we need someone to call you a cab? And I appreciate you stopping by and hanging out, Shuck. Hope you have an awesome rest of the night. Hey, man, do you need a cab? Oh, cutscene, I guess. It hurts. It ultra mega hurts. <laughs> you never know when constipation is going to hit my guy. Nia, where's my darling Nia? What happened? Here's a pepto -bismal. This fine gentleman appears to have tripped on a rock and struck his head. Uh, adventures aren't to be taken lightly. I've learned that first head now. First hand, I mean. I was just checking to see if my little girl was behind some rocks. And look how I've ended up. Find some rocks? Is your daughter a roly coly, sir? <laughs> there we go, I'm up. No little bump's gonna keep me down for long. That <laughs> kip's got me feeling right as rain. How about it then, lass? Do you find my darling Nia? I did, but. Hmm. You don't say. So, <laughs> there's no chance of saving her, huh? <laughs> so, dear Nia's set on staying away till she's had her fill of this Dynamax adventure stuff. She wants the two of us to go ahead and get cracking on the Grand Peony Adventure? You know, I've burned the candle at both ends, working out the best itinerary I could for my dear Nia's sake. But I guess she's at that age when she doesn't want her old man tagging along all the time. And trying to press her into doing what I want to do probably won't win me any Dad of the Year awards. Right then, what's your name, kid? Shia LaBeouf. Cheers, Shia LaBeouf! My name is Peony! Wait, have I already told you so? <laughs> that it's twice as nice to meet you. Next time I repeat my name to somebody, I'm gonna say that. It's twice as nice to meet you. I'm so hyped! No, let's have ourselves a smashing adventure that my dear Neil be itching to join in the fun. Uh, yes, let's. I'll say the other option when we play through S.H.I.E.L.D. later. Now that's an ultra mega great response. Just what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> We're going to have ourselves a real treat of a legendary Pokemon hunt, but I'll only catch it if it's shiny. So that's decided. Like, just in case they don't respawn. I assume they do. Like, it's one of two things. If there's always going to be a shiny, like, a shiny. If there's always going to be a legendary Pokemon at the end. Either they respawn so that, like, after you've caught every single legendary here, you know, they still keep appearing. Or, after you've caught every single legendary here, it just starts making, like, really powerful other Pokemon. Just in case it's the latter thing, I'm for now, I'm just gonna knock out any legendary Pokemon that aren't shiny. Just so that, like, in just in case I do want to try, like, shiny hunting them later, it, like, in between games of Dead by Daylight or something like that, I'm going to, you know, freaking not screw myself over. And it's tagged no spoilers so that no, like, when somebody has the no spoilers tag, it basically means anybody's stopping in. Like, if you know what's going to happen, don't spoil it, is basically what that is. So if anybody's, like, further into the Crown Tundra or has seen another streamer go further into it because plenty of people have started before I did, then, like, don't spoil it for me, basically. So that's decided. Now then, Harmonia. Let's get ourselves to Freezington. <laughs> that's basically where I live in real life, it feels like. There's a town just a short ways off. Time for a strategic plan and meeting for Peony's adventure. I'll fill you will in on the details once you get there. I say, let us reconvene post haste. <laughs> just pulling your leg. Can you imagine if I actually talk like that? I mean, I can't really. I'm doing the same voice no matter what, so I can't really tell. <laughs> No, no, that's the intention of it is just like, I'm not going to spoil what happens and kind of asking others to not spoil it either. Like, so anybody coming in here doesn't have to worry about like anything ahead of this being spoiled. Oh, it shows the little icon down there that shows that I found Suicune. Dang it, I was mid-sentence there. That would have been the perfect place to cut it up into like a different part from here to now. I guess this other part is just going to stop when we come up and see him for the first time out of the cave instead, even though coming out of that cave would have been a better place to transition, but I can't do that because I was a mid-sentence at the time, so I can't cut it up into parts there. Well, I guess the end of the last part of this is going to be like when we come out of the thing with Suicune and then run into the dude, and then it's still that same part right now when I cut it up into parts later. I should really like talk less during loading screens for that very reason, just for like when I cut things up into parts later, because otherwise I screw myself over from perfect opportunities like that. How do I get down there? Also, what is this crap over here? I'm taking it for science, cosmic power. That's something that science sounds like it would benefit from. <laughs> okay, so he went like down this way, down the slope. Let's go down this way is what we do. Zigzag is what we better do. So... 
that might also be a good place to like transition between episodes whenever i'm streaming i always like to think of like the best ways this cuts up into parts and that transition right there this like right now might be the best place to start a new i don't even know hello hello what have we here another visitor mm. i'm the mayor of this fair town of freezington and as per our policies as a newcomer you must now freeze your ass off i must say it's a surprise to have visitors arriving in our out of the way town one after another might you be here to learn about the legend of the King of Bountiful Harvests as well? Yeah, sure am. Oh, never mind, it hardly bears asking. After all, there's very little otherwise to attract visitors to our sleepy corner of the region. Which is a bit of a shame, really. Nobody wants to see my award-winning winter pumpkin. People come all this way to investigate what turns out to be a mere fairy tale. But since you've made the journey, I must offer you this Freezington specialty as memento. You got Freezington's fame boat neck sweatshirt? It's a shirt emblazoned with the likeness of the King of Bountiful Harvests. I'm afraid it hasn't sold quite as well as we'd hoped. We've got a fair number left over. The illustration's based on extremely ancient accounts of the King's appearance. <laughs> so this shirt has like a fan art of him on it, hence the unusually sized head. So no head? But we thought that it might make a design the design touch more hip as they say. And that's why we've also included a rare Pepe on the shirt to make it more hip. If you'd like to see what the king really looked like, I suggest you look at the statue by the fields in the center of our village. Turns out the king was a cat that like sat on the back of a donkey. By the by, while you're here in the crown tundra, feel free to let your elite Pokemon out of its ball and take it for a stroll. Nice, so that is still a thing. Farewell for now then. I'm glad that that's a thing here. <laughs> Oi! I hope that's like the Pokemon Center over there. Over here, Harmonia. I hope that's like Pokemon Center because my Pokemon are probably still not like healed. And is that an emo edit that put like the hat onto? There we go. Look at that. We get to actually have like follow Pokemon again, which is quite nice. Oh, I can't go right through there. Corviknight's getting a little bit stuck. But what you gonna do, I guess? Well, I hope we can, like, heal here. Freeze in. I assume we can. We got a wishing piece. Excuse me, Corviknight. I've got places to be. Welcome to my cooking show. I mean, here you are. This pokey little place will be our lodgings. <laughs> You've only just met me and you're already sharing your place to live? Okay. Like the inn that you're staying at? But as of this moment, also something far more important. Our base camp. As far as you know, you turn around and I could stab you in the back. I know, I know, not much of a base camp, is it? Still, we've got to give it a proper air of importance, haven't we? Now, enough faffing about Harmonia. Let me tell you what the Peony Exploration Team is after. Round here, they've got a fair few strange and mysterious legends. Like that one about the rare Pepe. I'm always pondering that one. For example! A huge-headed Pokemon known as the King of Rare Pepes, I mean Bountiful Harvests. Not to mention a massive red tree where legendary flying Pokemon gather. And furthermore, these great hulking, dog-faced giants that sleep in some ruins or some shit, I don't know, etc. See what I mean? This place is just bursting with juicy legends. And we're not stopping till we found out just how much truth they've got to them. And there you have it. We are the Peony Exploration Team. That, when he said exploration team, that reminded me of like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers, but like, and that is our grand, noble, magnificent goal. If Rescue Team, not Rescue Team, if Explorers gets a remake on the Switch, should I just have our team name be like the PE Exploration Team? Of course, if I had my way, I'd be doing this with my darling Nia. But you're my replacement kid now. Nia's dead, we have to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? They say even chancy meeting can lead to blissful relationships. But here's to a grand adventure. Expedition Chief, Chief Harmonia. <laughs> Chief? <laughs> Obviously. Look, what do you think would happen if the two of us went gallivanting off together? My dear Nia could come along for a grand emotional reunion and find this place empty. Just the thought of it. My own darling daughter sitting alone in this room pining for her papa. At first, at first I misread that. At first I thought it said shitting alone in this room. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't say that. Ah, nope, not on my watch. I'd never let that happen. So I'll hold down the fort, Chief. Hey, that's what I say. Which means you can get the you get the pleasure of being the expedition chief. 
Which brings me to this. Go on, have it. I bestow upon you the greatest honor I can bestow. The... Wait, what's it called? I'm trying to reference up. But what does he call it when he gives Russell the freaking badge? Does he call it the Ellie badge? Dang, I can't even make references to things when I want to. Not the expedition uniform. We're going on an adventure out of the Shire. Oh my goodness, we're ready to go into some caves. And like through winter and stuff. <laughs> Look at that. Fits you like a glove. I brought some spare uniforms so my dear Neo would have a few to change into. So there's enough to give you one. I'm running this way now. And if you have any change or have a kip, by all means. Just headed into the bedroom back here. So I guess that's where I can heal my Pokemon. I've got some different colored scarves in there. Oh, I love scarves. So switch it up if it fancy a bit of style. I didn't even notice a scarf. I love scarves. I'm literally wearing a scarf right now. Here, have these two. It's called health insurance. I mean, legendary clue one. A clue about the King of Bountiful Harvest. It's written by Peony and an old photo of SpongeBob at the Christmas party I'm, is attached to it. Uh, King of Bountiful Harvest. Weird bunny thing. There's a fairy tale in Freezington about the legendary Pokemon known as the King of Bountiful Harvests. In the legend, the king is said to wear a mouse massive crown on its head, but the wooden statue near the field in the middle of the village shows no sign of a crown, only a big ugly rock thing. Legendary clue too. Can I do these in like whatever order or something? So maybe I should do them in like a different order for sword and shield version? That might be a pretty cool idea. Clue about the Legend of Giants. It's written by Peony and has unique drawings. So maybe I'll do them in different orders. Like, start out with, I don't know, King of Bountiful Harvests in Sword version and do the Legendary Giants one in Shield version? Just to, like, mix things up and stuff? Far, far into the Giant's bed lies a temple where the Giant of Stone sleeps. On the temple's door, there are strange words. Let the... something yada yada. The door remains firmly shut. Sunken in the side of Snow Slide Slope lies a temple where the giant of ice sleeps. On the temple's door, strange words. Way Luigi! The door remains firmly shut. Near where the- Oh, I thought there'd only be like two or something. Because apparently this like DLC was supposed to add like two new Reggie legendaries. So I thought there'd be two. But there's four pages of it? Oh. Oh, maybe these just unlock them and then this is the thing that actually has the two. And these are just like clues. That makes more sense. Where the giant, where the green meets snow in the giant's bed lies a temple where the giant of steel sleeps. On the temple's door, strange words. Door remains firmly shut. Oh! So that must be Reggie Rock, Regice, Registeel, and then the two new Reggies. That's what it must be. That makes sense. I don't know why the Regice one is freaking green instead of blue, but okay, sure. I wonder if they're shiny locked. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if there's answers to these already. I'm gonna, hold on. I'm gonna look it up in a second. On the distant path of Three Point Pass lies a temple where two giants sleep. On the temple's door, strange words. Way Luigi, read door. Door remains firmly shut. I am freaking looking this up right now. There's probably not gonna be an answer yet. Crown Tundra, I'm just gonna look up first shiny locks. Crown Tundra, shiny locks. Let's see here. Which Pokemon are shiny locked in the Crown Tundra? Let's find the answer. Um, let's see here. Okay, I need to scroll down a bit. Yeah, I know what shiny locks are. That begs the question, which of the long list of legendary Pokemon available in the Crown Tundra DLC are shiny locked? Fortunately, it's only a few of them. Most can be found in their shiny form. We're gonna turn chat back on again briefly. I'm sorry to hear that the Twitch mobile app is glitching, but that be Twitch mobile sometimes. Um, let's see here. So according to some person who's a respected figure in the Pokemon community, it seems like the three Galarian versions of the birds are shiny locked, which I guess this is gonna be. Clue about the Legend of the Bird Pokemon is written by Peony and has a unique drawing. Okay, so there's three different legends that we can pursue. Dang it! So if I do one in Sword and one in Shield, one's gonna- well, they're all gonna get all three done eventually, but like... Hmm, how best to handle this. When the sun reaches its zenith, it shines directly down upon a great tree with leaves that seem to burn. It is there that the legendary wings come to roost. So they're shiny locked. So we can do that without needing to worry about, like, not being able to get their shiny la later. So Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres Galarian forms are shiny locked, it looks like. Oh, there's apparently a couple, like, 
legendaries available that were like event legendaries in the past because it says that apparently Victini and Keldeo are shiny locked and those are mythicals that were only available by event in the past so I guess they're available normally here now but they're shiny locked apparently Cosmog is shiny locked as well which is wait could you get a shiny of the main legendaries in Sun and Moon I don't think you could so I guess that's nothing new in that case uh, Poipole is shiny locked, which wasn't the case in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, but I think I think I heard that apparently the shiny charm doesn't affect Poipole. Yeah, I think that Cosmog and like those legendaries were always shiny locked in Sun and Moon. I think. I'm not sure. But I'm fairly certain they were. Poipole. Apparently we can get a Poipole here. Yeah, some yeah, good question. Maybe Maybe the dude himself. Peony drew him? I don't know. Well, I mean, Keldeo was an event thing. Same with Victini. Like, there are mythicals that you could only get through, like, events and stuff like that. So if they're available here normally, that'd be pretty cool. But I guess they're, like, holding out on releasing them in shiny forms just in case they wanted to do so for an event. So apparently, Poipol is shiny locked. And if that is what I think it is, I'm just gonna Google it just to be extra sure. Poipol. Um, Poipol. Yes, it is exactly what I think it is. The one in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, the Poipol, is not shiny locked, but the thing about that Poipol is that apparently the shiny charm doesn't affect it, and you just do it with, like, full odds. And I reset for that Poipol just under a thousand times, only to find out my shiny charm did nothing to it, somebody told me later, that apparently, for some reason, the shiny charm doesn't affect gift Pokemon. So, like... You know, that sucks, and it especially sucks if it's shiny locked here. One of his Pokemon drew it or something? Maybe. And apparently the other shiny locks are called Glastrier, Spectrier, and Calyrex, which I assume are the two new Regis, and then like the main legendary of the Crown Tundra, respectively. Okay. Um, wait, no, they're not. So it says that means the likes of Regirock, Regice, Registeel, Regilecki, and Regidrago, the two new Regimons can be shiny. So what the heck is Glastrier and Spectrier? Well, I guess I might have potentially spoiled myself to like some other legendaries that exist here. I'm gonna avoid googling them in that case to uh, like be surprised to like what other legendary Pokemon could be in the Crown Tundra that like weren't announced beforehand. Because apparently the whole Reggie thing are all available as shinies, including like the two new ones. Um... Wait, it says on the article here, it's not surprising the new legendaries, the Galarian birds, Gla oh, it, it does include Glastier, Spectrier. Okay, so there are two new legendaries that like weren't announced beforehand. I'm gonna avoid Googling them so that their designs are surprised me, but I guess I accidentally spoiled that there's a couple other legendary Pokemon here, is the thing. Um, I'm gonna look at some other sites just to double check to see any potential shiny locks. Let's see here. Confirm legendaries and Dynamax adventures can be shiny. Let's see here. At the end of most Dynamax Adventures, players will have the chance to run into nearly any legendary Pokemon that has ever been available in a main series Pokemon game, and the best part is they have a 100% catch rate if you manage to beat them, so just like regular Dynamax kind of things if you're going it solo. Um, let's see here. So the legendaries in the Max Raid Dens are for sure not shiny locked. Um, let's see here. And somebody apparently says you can't soft reset for the legendaries in Dynamax Adventures. If you reset, you have to start from the beginning of the mode. So at least I have the shiny charm. Um, so I guess you have to go through like the cave all the way through every time you want to like try to encounter that Pokemon and find it shiny and stuff like that. Um, so you can't soft reset for it. That sucks though. You have to literally start the Dynamax Adventure from the first battle. That's weird. That's very strange. All right, let's see here. I'm going to try to find one more site just to like confirm everything. Let's see. Shiny Lock Pokemon in the Crown Tundra. There are a total of 10 Pokemon Shiny Locked in the Crown Tundra expansion pass. It's Calyrex, Cosmog, Glacier, Keldeo, Poipol, Spectrier, Victini, and the Galarian forms. Okay, so that corroborates what the other sites said is the thing. Um... Yeah, so it seems like it's probably that. I still want to know if the Pokemon in the freaking whatever the adventure thing is respawn if you catch them. 
Like, I assume they don't. I'm just going to knock them out as long as they're not shiny for that very reason. And I wonder, I'm thinking that maybe since I have like two versions of the game, since I have both sword and shield version, I'm thinking that maybe I will complete the whole Reggie quest line. Since like apparently if we do the quest line for the main legendary of this, apparently it's shiny locked as well as any potential and uh, the other two potential ones I've never heard of that are apparently shiny locked as well. If we do the Galarian bird one, this one right here, they're also shiny locked. I'll adjust the Dirty Camp down a little bit now that she's adjusted and spread out and stuff. But the Reggie quest is not shiny locked, including the two new ones. They can all be found shiny. So what I'm thinking is, is maybe in sword version, we'll only do the legendary quests for like the Galarian birds and for the new kind of big shiny, uh, the big shiny, new big legendary of the crown tundra. But in shield version, we'll do all three is what I'm thinking. So that we at least cover it in like one of them. So I can like catch all the Reggies in shield version and have them there. And then by having it not done in sword version, I can then use sword version if I want to like do that in a shiny hunting way later down the line. I'm thinking about the big picture here. So there's three legendary things, the big new one, the Galar birds and the Reggies. So I'll probably just do the Galar birds and the main one in sword version but do all three of them in shield version so that the Reggies are still available in sword version if I want to wind up shiny hunting, if I'm like grinding between DVD games. That is the idea that I just came up with now on the spot that I couldn't have planned for ahead of time because I'm only just finding things out like right now <laughs> is the thing. But I like that idea. So usually, usually we do have like parts alternating between one another for these DLCs of sword and shield with like the equivalent parts back to back. But I guess, I guess this is going to break that system by a decent bit, is the thing. And like, I'll probably be doing like the different things in different orders, I guess. Um, well. Legendary clues are meticulously compiled from hours of dedicated telewatching. First off, why don't I have a look at the clue about the King of Bountiful Harvest? I forgot there was a cutscene going on after all my rambling. Seems like this king's bonds with its loyal steed, or whatever you call it, run proper deep. So if I had to name this expedition, I'd call it... <laughs> the Sacred Bonds of Sovereign and Steed? There's a great big statue of a bang in the middle of the village. Though, its head isn't as massive as in my notes. Did he steal the head? You want to change back into your usual clothes? Yeah, we'll rock this for a little while. No need to change. I want to put on a different scarf, though. Time to investigate the legends surrounding the Crown Tundra. Ah, I've just had an idea. Here's a little something to help you out. Oh, he just gives me a Master Ball. It's supposed to be one ultra mega corker of a ball. Use it whenever you think he ought to. I got it ages ago from somebody I used to know. Never could bring myself to use it, though. If you ever get a bit turned around, come back to base camp anytime. You can't miss it. Just look for the adventuring crew flag I stuck out front. Handmade by yours truly. Anyway, I suppose that's that. Let the grand adventure begin. Have a smashing time out there. Okay, he literally stole the head. Anyway, and the doggy's name is Jessie. And now she's looking up at me like, why'd you mention my name? I'm trying to sleep over here. Hello, hello, Diego. Hope you're doing well today. Guess you'll play this later. Oh, the cutscene sort of. Hey, Chief. My pillow's caught your eye, eh? Your pillow? Oi, listen here, Chief. I've got some wisdom to impart. If you can put your head on it and have a kip, it's a pillow. Unfortunately, I went and left my favorite pillow back at home. So I went to have a look around town for something to rest my head on. And I found this out back behind the inn. <laughs> can I have it? Come off it! Want me to hand over my ultra mega comfy pillow? I'm not asking a lot even coming from you, Chief. <laughs> What's that you say? You think my pillow's got something to do with a legendary Pokemon? Yeah, it's the head of that statue. Ugh, Ultra Mega, seriously? This is just some old thing I found. But if you really want it, Chief, who am I to refuse? All right, all right, go on then, have it. But you better make sure you track that legend down. <laughs> you ink? You obtained a wooden crown, cool. I just wanted to inspect it. A mysterious object made of wood, part of it seems to be chipped. Maybe it's meant to be part of something. Okay, well. But yeah, <laughs> hello, Jesse. 
And how am I anyways? I've had a very interesting day today. I started out this morning, like right at the beginning of the morning with online class. Let's restore my Pokemon. And then from there, I went into the garage to get my car centered in the middle of the garage. Since it's a two car, car the, since it's a two car garage, I got it centered right in the middle. And my neighbor who I've been helping with like driving practice and stuff like that, because my car is an automatic, the neighbor's car is a standard, which is like way more strict for the driving tests. So I've been giving my neighbor driving practice in my car for her to do the test in that as well, is the idea. I basically knew that I had to change over to winter tires because it's starting to look a bit wintry here in this part of Canada. It's literally only October 22nd and we already have snow on the ground that's staying on the ground. It's starting to get like pretty cold here already. My goodness. So uh, sometimes it'd be like that. So I about a week ago, I sent her a text being like, hey, what a lesson in changing tires by chance. And she was like, okay, and we picked a date for, like, today. So after I set up my car and stuff like that and rolled all my winter tires out, like, into the garage and stuff like that, I bas I did basically, like, the first tire and showed how it was done, and then from there, mostly just, like, supervised to make sure she was doing it right and just got to watch as, like, mostly somebody else changed my tires for me. It was great. Like, <laughs> from, from the effort that I was doing, I still might have hurt my shoulder a little bit because it was a little bit sore before the stuff today. But... <laughs> like, most of the physical effort today, or, like, most of the potential physical effort, was letting somebody else do it for once, which was cool. So, there was that. So, my car now has winter tires on, which is great. And we rolled the summer tires, like, out to our little tent garage that we have in the back. So, those are all, those are all stored away and stuff. And then, I started working on a presentation that I have for a class that's on digital media and IT and we are currently in a subject talk about like effective communication so our teacher our professor asked us to basically write like a presentation on anything so naturally I did a presentation on nuclear energy <laughs> my favorite so uh earlier today I was working on wrapping up the actual presentation of that and literally just before I started this stream I recorded myself doing it. I probably have the recording on this computer. Do I even have my recordings folder open? So, oh, I should also mention, like, after working on that presentation, I had another online class, and I had some Chinese food with that. And we were originally going to do some Pikmin 2 things, but then Uneven's power went out, as he was mentioning earlier, so we couldn't do Pikmin 2 stuff. So I wound up watching the presidential debate instead. And it wasn't actually as bad as the last one. There was, like, less interrupting. There was, an, there was a way for them to mute unneeded interruptions if need be which which happened like once or twice so i only saw like the second half of the debate but it was interesting to see and i feel like you know they were definitely more on topic this time not perfect but like at least more on topic this time so it'll be interesting to see how the election goes and stuff so it was uh so my day was online class tire change and teaching somebody else how to change the tires presentation work online class watch presidential debate presentation work again to actually record myself doing it and then start the stream oh wait and i forgot right in the middle right smack dab in the middle i tried to stream this right when it came out between changing the car tires working on the presentation and doing the second online class i tried to stream this and it wasn't out already and we wound up streaming breath of the wild for a couple hours instead so i missed that tidbit of today but apart from that, that's basically been, like, my whole day today. And if I find my recordings folder, would this even open on my second monitor? Hold on, I'm curious. So, literally just before I started this stream, if I can even find it. This, will it open on this screen, I wonder? Is the thing? Yeah, apparently it does. So, literally, hold on, if I go to, if I go to Display Capture 2 for a hot second... I'm probably going to upload this to, like, some other YouTube channel that isn't my own, even if, like, even if it's unlisted so you can only find it with the link, just so that, like, you know, my professor doesn't find, like, my YouTube channel, stuff like that. So I was literally recording this earlier Typically today. about 200 times more. Oh, I was talking about thorium, thorium there. ...has the potential to produce the same amount of energy as 200 tons of uranium, or the same amount as 3.5 million tons of coal being burned. So I try to do the whole thing in one take because I think that most people are, who are recording are probably going to be doing it in one take and a lot of people doing this probably aren't video editors who do video essays like I do and stuff. And a lot of people are presenting in class rather than doing it like pre-recorded. 
essentially. So because the people doing it one class have to do it in one take anyway, I figured it'd only be fair if I did it in one take. It's supposed to be a five minute presentation. This whole thing is 17 minutes because I did failed takes up until about like here-ish or something like that. And then this was the take that I like finally settled with essentially. Um, so uh, nuclear reactors. So the process that we have at the end of the day for nuclear technology and nuclear reactors is still very old technology. At the end of the day, we're still just heating up some water by doing a very controlled reaction with uranium to turn some turbines so that was earlier today um that was literally right before i started the stream so uh you know that okay that's my day recounted <laughs> so much to do that was certainly a busy day yes and it continues to be busy as we cover this and stuff um i am good so it's an armband not a scarf i wonder if i play the male trainer if it's a scarf instead that sucks that it's a freaking armband instead of a scarf i want a scarf like this Explosion team controller, normal tank controller. Let's try water then, is what we'll do. But yeah, that was my that was my day today. Uh, no, let's not reprint my league card. Oh look, I like the blue. Dang, I probably turned on my cameras way too late if I want to use that for a thumbnail later. But uh, <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Um, anyway, so we have the three legends there. I'm only using his knowledge gained on the Breath of the Wild discussion to talk about nuclear energy. I wouldn't say just the Breath of the Wild discussion. Freaking every video essay I do, I guess. But, like, you know, a very different format, to say the least. Um, okay, so can I check, like, the legendary notes? Whoops, how do I change? Okay, like that. Okay, legendary clue. So, as I was mentioning before... Oh yeah, we got EXP charm from the Thingmer Bob, and because I caught them all here and stuff, we do have the shiny charm. For like, potential shiny hunting in the future. So, here's what I'm thinking. Is, to start things out, to do things a little bit different. Because usually when I'm covering both sword and shield, the way that they're uploaded on YouTube is having like, two parts back to back, that are like, interconnected with one another. Like, this content in sword version, the equivalent content in shield version, and back and forth. But I'm thinking we might actually mix things up a little bit, because it seems like you can pursue these in any order. So here's my thought process. How about, in sword version, we start by going after the King of Bountiful Harvests, and tra doing that whole quest line. And in shield version, we go after the Galar birds. That's what I'm thinking, for a way to mix things up. So that way, anybody seeing, like, the episodes back-to-back anyway get to see you know the two different investigations on two different games with like two very different teams as well with completely different team compositions since it was different playthroughs and my trainer being completely different that actually sounds like a really cool idea i like that and then we'll just like not do the freaking reggie one in sword version just just so that we can potentially shiny hunt it later so we're gonna start out with legendary clue one for sword three for shield and then we'll do two for shield afterwards, but then leave it be in sword version. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's going to be my thought process and strategy here. Probably. We'll see what happens. Let's just pursue this for now, I guess. But yeah, anyways, did you hear that they are localizing firearms, Shadow Dragon, the Blade of Light, supposedly for the first time? Yeah, it only took them like freaking 30 years. <laughs> Classic Nintendo fashion is only for a limited time. I heard about that. That's so weird. Like why they would do it for a limited time. I'm going to save here. So yeah, we'll get Galar Burbs in Shield version, but we'll go after like the new Legendary in Sword version. It's literally Canada. That tree's so weird. Okay, so there's like the Reggie ruins. Some max raid beams. This is actually a really nice looking area, honestly. This is actually really cool. T dang it, that was an accidental pun. <laughs> it feels like somebody wants to sell me something. <laughs> That's what I thought of when I saw her peek over the shoulder there. Who might we want following for now? We could always like switch back to my good old reliable Raul. Hello, Raul. The first shiny that I got in Pokemon Sun and Moon is what it was. Is that 3D Mario collection all over again? Oh, the whole limited time thing? Yeah, I have a whole video essay on that and why I don't like three Super Mario 3D All-Stars. <laughs> it's a statue of a Pokemon, exclamation point. But it somehow feels as if something's miss- as if it's missing something. 
it looks like the wooden crown could fit onto the statue here. So I guess I won't be doing this until like later in shield version and just be like ignoring the statue when I get here in shield. You want to try fitting it on? Uh, yes. Get crowned. Russell Russell Schwunk. Oh, beautiful. The wooden crown fit perfectly on the statue. <laughs> crown. I am the ghost of Christmas crown past. Here to haunt you. Oh. Thanks for fixing my statue. I'm going to go this way now. I'm going to my room. Bye. Does it want you to follow it? Oh. Shall we go, Raul? Shall we go? In case anybody didn't see my freaking Isle of Armor playthrough and wants to know why my shiny Decidueye is called Raul, it's because there was one time that I was... In Pokemon Sun and Moon, there was a method of, like, shiny hunting slash EV, like, grinding, essentially, that you could do that would involve the horde battles where you fight five Pokemon at once. And, wait, no, no, it wasn't that. I'm thinking of freaking auras. I'm thinking of the two Pokemon at once. There was a thing where you could fight two wild Pokemon at once, and you could knock one out, and then it would s the one who was remaining would call for reinforcements, and another one would appear. And you could shiny hunt like that, essentially, by just having, like, two wild Pokemon continuously knock out one while another one, like, continues to summon another one. And from time to time, you switch targets back and forth from one to the other, like, just because the other one might run out of move uses if you wait too long. Now, the best Pokemon to do this with was a Decidueye, because a Decidueye could learn False Swipe, in addition to learning Tackle and Leafage, which were both 40 usage moves, meaning you could keep that, like, chain that you're doing going for a very, very long time, 80 turns from that alone, and it being a ghost type means that, like, if it's a wild Pokemon that uses normal type moves, it's not even gonna hit it. And then I think for the last move, I would have had, like, Synthesis or something like that, just to, like, restore if I did start taking some damage. So it was, like, Leafage, Tackle, Synthesis, False Swipe, something like that. And it was just, like, the Sun and Moon shiny freaking grinding machine, essentially. So I was doing a whole bunch of breeding to get, like, good IVs and stuff like that to make like a decide UI that would be really good for that and i had the shiny charm and i was using the mizuda method and along the way i wound up getting a shiny rowlet and that shiny rowlet it was during a time when my aunt from another province over was temporarily visiting and i was like oh i have this shiny rowlet what should i name it and she was like oh well its name is normally rowlet how about you call it raul and i was like okay raul it is and now, even though it's a Decidueye instead of a Rowlet, we have our Raul the Owl here. <laughs> One of my few Pokemon that has stuck with me for a long time since then, who, like, has a nickname instead of just, like, the default thing, and, and <laughs> his name is Raul. So, unfortunately, it wasn't at a point where, like, the IVs were exactly what I wanted them to be at that point. So, like, it's not perfectly bred with IVs or anything like that, because I wasn't quite at that point in my breeding when I got the shiny. But I think he, I think he still has, like, several perfect IVs anyway for me doing that. Like, hold on. If I go to boxes... But yeah, Hawkscore, you hate them for that? Like, why for limited time can't they release it permanently? Yeah, that's... It's strange. Yeah, if I... Oh, yeah, it was very early on into my... Into my thing, then. Oh, that was, like, one of the worst ones, then. In that case, in terms of IVs, at least. What the heck? I thought it was better than that. Honestly. Like, it still has some very goods there. But it was... It would have been a physical attacker if it was meant for shiny hunting. But anyway, after I got that shiny... I briefly used Raul for shiny hunting, very briefly. But then down the line, I took away those, like, shiny hunting moves that were specifically for Sun and Moon, and then... Raul just got to, like, join along on journeys like this one. So, thank goodness I was able to transfer over Raul now that we can, you know, take Raul on our adventures and stuff like that. So, I gotta say that from, like, all my Pokemon that I've had across the years of playing Pokemon, Raul's probably one of my favorites. I would say. And alright, sounds good, Brysel. Hi, you're gonna take me into the bushes? Yo, you wanna see some weed? There's some seriously dank stuff in these bushes, bro. You would not believe it. Seems as if the mysterious Pokemon wants to test your strength. You want to ready a Pokeball? 
What the heck? What the heck is this crap? Am I gonna try to catch this right now? Raul doesn't still know false swipe, does he? Hold on. Because I know I took it off a while back, but it could still be good to just have, like... Okay, I do still know false swipe, because that's still one of the handy things to just have anyway. Okay! Well, are we trying to catch it right now? And I always catch things in, like, standard Pokeballs because I'm crazy. I always catch things either in standard Pokeballs or something that matches the colors of what I'm trying to catch. Never anything else. Okay, so we definitely don't catch it now if it's just showing question marks. Definitely not. That is how it typically works. <laughs> Crow round! Oh, mystery level? That's interesting, to say the least. Well, how about we go ahead and use Spirit Shackle? What if it was, like, freaking the Gen 2 roaming legendaries where it would flee after, like, one turn? Because this would be perfect for Spirit Shackle. Oh, never mind, because I'm about to say it can't escape after Spirit Shackle. Well, that was quick. I assume I can't catch it. I hope- I mean, I saved just in case. <laughs> well, you wanted to test my strength, I one-shotted you. Okay, yeah, that was scripted then, so you probably can't catch it yet. <laughs> Did you have fun? <laughs> it's like, it's like after a round of Dead by Daylight, there's the rating thing from 1 to 5. Did you have fun? I sure hope you had fun getting freaking nuked by S Raul's spirit shackle. My favorite shiny Pokemon I have. <laughs> Oi, oi, what's up? What a big ruckus coming from over here. Did you just nuke some poor legendary? What's this now, Chief? Are you having a Pokemon battle? Huh? What a massive noggin! <laughs> to space! Oh, never mind. <laughs> what's this? Stare into my eyes. Wait, what is happening? Is this Pokemon going to, like, speak through him or something? p &E question mark? Are we going to hear this Pokemon speak through him? Oh my goodness, we are! What the heck? We've seen this in, like, the TV show for Pokemon before, but have we ever seen anything like this in the games? This might be the first... Well, in terms of telepathy, that is. I don't know if anybody's, like, possessed a body in the Pokemon show and, like, spoken through it. <laughs> what, what kind of voice would I do for the legendary Pokemon then? What if I did something like really jokingly? What if I did my freaking Cyrus voice, like from Octopath Traveler? That I also used in like for Seedon earlier today. Like, <laughs> that might be fitting, maybe. Something like, ah, oh, yes, a sturdy body, just as I expected. Hope he doesn't mind that I make use of it for the time being. <laughs> Are you the Pokemon? Oh. I see you have grasped the situation already. Very astute of you. I'm Calyrex. I'm the one known as the King of Bountiful Harvests. I have borrowed this man's body in order to thank you in person, so to speak. <laughs> but he will now die in three minutes! Indeed, there are no words that adequately, adequately express my gratitude toward you for restoring my statue. I love that thing! In days long past, I reigned over these lands as king humans offered me their loyalty and respect, as I was able to bring lush vegetation to the land and give them plentiful harvests year after year. However, it seems that over many, many years, the people of this land have forgotten my existence. Well, that maybe that's what happens when you vanish for so long. People forget that you were around. They used to make offerings to me every year, but even that tradition has long since been lost to the ravages of time. Well then, show up to them and say, hey, I'm still here, wanna be friends? You see, it is the faith of the people that grants me strength. And now I have lost all but a fraction of my former power. Even my loyal steed has abandoned me. So what would your steed be? So, I, when I was looking up the shiny locked Pokemon, there were two names that I didn't recognize and I didn't see in any of the trailers. Is that horse one of them? Probably, if I had to guess, but then what's the other one? However, however you are kind enough to restore my statue. That act has returned some strength to me. At least, enough to speak to you by borrowing the body of another. Now, kind-hearted human child. CHILD! I have a favor to ask of you. T 
take a knife and kill him. I must know once and for all whether the people have truly forgotten about me. Are we gonna do an investigation here for Calyrex? We are! <laughs> I was not expecting this. I don't know what I was expecting from the Crown Tundra, but it certainly wasn't this. I wish you to speak to the villagers and ask if they remember the King of Bountiful Harvests. I've tried asking them myself, you understand. Oh, you have? But they treat me like some sort of fairy tale creature or flew into some mild panic at the sight of me. Okay, so you have tried. Okay, thank goodness the story writers here thought about that like plot hole and addressed it instead of it just being like a plot hole. Like, thank you for doing that, <laughs> devs and stuff. Please, kind-hearted human, I beg you to help me. Why? Okay, so you can make progress on each of them individually. That's cool. That's really cool. I like that. My oh my. Anyway, I'll turn the chat back on. And yeah, you might not be able to see Party Parrot if you don't have BTTV, but you can see it on the stream right over there. So it still works just fine. You'll just have to like know that it exists here, but you might, you'll just see like the text that says Party Parrot. Um, Calyrex appeared once I planted the crown of the on the statue of the King of Bountiful Harvests. Calyrex can apparently speak to humans by taking over a person's body. Peonies in this case. Now I need to gather more information on the King of Bountiful Harvests from the people of the village. So you can progress each of them individually. That's actually really cool. So the Crown Tundra is like an open world with three different quest lines that you can progress at. Like, in different, like at your own pace and stuff like that. That's so cool. My oh my. That's awesome. I like that! I like that a lot, honestly! That's really cool! So, this horse has to be like some other Pokemon then. That I guess we get later. And then there's one more. So, when I looked up the Shiny Locks Pokemon, I recognized all of them, like, except for two. What, did you see something, Raul? Is there something over there? What do you see? See something over there? I didn't recognize two of them. I assume this horse is one of them. I don't know what the other one is. Your steed and your something else. Hmm. But yeah, anyway, the comment about Super Mario 3 All-Stars, their Hawks car, their weaponizing nostalgia, how much do you bet it actually runs on emulator? It literally just is emulated for Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Like, for example, in Super Mario Sunshine, there are there's one level, for example, where you can literally see the debug squares for where certain tiles move, which wasn't even a problem in the GameCube version. It's only a problem for emulators like Dolphin and in 3D All-Stars. So it's literally just an emulated experience that you're getting on 3D All-Stars anyway, basically. Hi. Welcome, I got some lovely goods for sale. Okay, what do you have? Okay, so you're just like a shop and stuff. I I have exactly 69 Pokeballs. Oh, Fire Emblem. That makes more sense then. Well, what were the odds I'd have exactly 69 Pokeballs right now? Well, let's just take out like 100 more just to be extra safe and stuff. Is what we'll do. I mean, if I did go shiny hunting at some point, I could always stock up on different kinds of Pokeballs. Just to, like... If... Since in the max raid dens, we'd have, like, the 100% catch rate anyway if we did it with NPCs. I'd be able to catch any shiny Pokemon that I see in a Pokeball that matches their colors. Like, regular Pokeball's pretty nice, but... A Pokeball that matches its colors is even better. I'm glad you know the first line to our national anthem. Here in the land of Canada, the land of Canucks. <laughs> and he's seeing an ad, so he can't even see me right now. I honestly wish I could disable ads. Like, on my Twitch stream. Like, I technically make revenue off of ads. But, like, nobody on Twitch makes, like, real, like, significant revenue off of Twitch ads. People make real significant revenue off of YouTube ads. I have made significant ad revenue off of YouTube ads, but nobody makes significant ad revenue off of Twitch ads. So if I could, if I had the option, I would totally disable ads on my freaking stream. But that's not an option. Hello there. But hello, hello, Cam. How are you doing today? Oh yeah, I guess it's a sub thing as well anyway. Oh dear, I'm sorry. I'm rather busy doing nothing right now, you ignorant child. Can't you see I'm staring at my beautiful spiel? Well, I guess we go ask the townsfolk and stuff like that. I love how they just don't see the, like, the legendary over there. Or just think nothing of it. How do they not know that, like, that thing over there is this statue right here? Like, do they not see the similarities? I love how Peony's just, like, levitating, just like, oh. 
It's great, man. <laughs> what legendary. Welcome to Freezing Ten. It must have been quite a journey to get here. The Crab Dungeon is famous for carrots. You know, maybe you'd be interested in getting some carrot seeds as a souvenir. Yes, please. Oh, well, quite the enthusiastic one, aren't you? I must admit, these seeds are rather valuable to us. How about a trade? You bring me eight pieces of dinette ore, I'll give you the seeds. Freaking eight pieces? I have like six right now. What the heck? What a scam! <laughs> King of Bountiful Harvest. I used to believe it was real, you know. I was told that if I made mischief in the field, I should do- I don't even have eight pieces, I have six pieces. The king would steal my body away. Oh, kind of like the king did with Peony. I don't know why I started making that remark in the granny voice that I was doing. Now, Pokemon King! Oh, sure, my grand used to tell me stories about it all the time when I was a kid. An old fairy tale that- Don't you love how these two look like literally exactly the same apart from skin tone? Literally the exact same model, but recolored. <laughs> Like, if you're gonna reuse models like this and change skin tones, at least have them be, like, separate so it's not as, like, noticeable that it's just the exact same model, is the thing. Like, have one of them talk to some other NPC, and then have, like, the one that's taken out moved somewhere else to talk to. So it's, like, less noticeable, but I mean, I don't know. What do I know? Like, they even both have the freaking mark on their head, or the flower thing. My goodness. But yeah. But yeah, who's the king? I like Smash skins like some of them. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I mean, they embraced it with Nurse Joy and Officer Jenny, but that was like part of the meme of it, though. Is a thing. Oh, there's like a double over there. Can I not walk through the like, freaking carrots? I have to literally go around and then through that way. That's dumb. Hey, a bountiful harvest. I don't know if it exists. Why well, doesn't heal the land around here so we can grow crops for a change? I don't know. I wonder how many people I need to talk to before. Before, that I'm already forgetting the name before Calyrex is happy. Like how many people I need to ask. Do I remember the King of Bountiful Harvest? Why, of course I do. It's only the main tourist attraction of our lovely Freezington after all. I imagine we would see more visitors if only the King were real. Okay, that's nice how the game gives me the alert that I asked enough people. You've asked the people of Freezington about the King of Bountiful Harvest. Time to report back to Calyrex. Chief! Chief Legendary Pokemon! I have a report to make to you. I've asked the townspeople. And it sounds like they want a freaking coup d'etat. I mean, not that. <laughs> this game makes no sense to you right now. Yeah, this is the second DLC. We battled this legendary and freaking one-shot it with Raul, who's apparently stuck somewhere right now, or flew off to be the beautiful night owl that he is. And then he possessed Peony's body, and his hat is floating right now, and he starts talking to us. And I don't know, is this the first time that like a Pokemon has ever spoken to us in the games? It might be, I don't know, I don't pay enough attention to these things. Ah, human child. Oh, not a human child, just back to human child. I trust you are able to speak to the villagers. So, how was it? Did they say anything about me? Any gossip? Did they say anything about my thighs? Hmm. And they did, but... Hmm, it is as I suspected. Nobody truly believes that I am real. It seems the people of this land indeed for have indeed forgotten the bond they once shared with me. Hmm. Oh no, of course I'm not grieving. I'm the King of Bountiful Harvests, after all. I know better than to count on humans to remember me. This proves beyond doubt that I simply cannot rely on human faith if I want my powers to return, and that means I must bring extinction to the human race. If only my loyal steed were to return to me. So I guess we do have to find it then. I would regain something of what I've lost. Your loyal steed? Yes, the four-legged Pokemon that I used to ride across the land. The very same Pokemon that my statue in the village shows me riding. Alas, though in ancient times we spent many days together, dashing through the valleys and over the mountains of this land. My power waned, and I was forced to part ways with it. Now I know not where it may be. Even if we should succeed in locating my loyal seed, I have my doubts as to whether it has remained, well, loyal. We did have a little bit of infighting to say the least. They said it's not- <laughs> it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I have lost so much power. Perhaps the villagers know something about my currently not-so-loyal steed. I'd be in your debt if you could speak to the head of the village on my behalf. If you are able to find any information at all, I ask that you let me know. To space! <laughs> Man, those mushrooms sure were intense. Chief, with a massive noggin. Er, wait, no, it's normal. 
I was a fallen asleep where I stood. Sorry about that, Chief. Still, I feel strange. Like my body's not quite my own. Let's head back to the base and get some rest. Besides, it's freezing out here. Well, what do you think about that crap, Raul? <laughs> Neat. Well, but yeah, take care, Bryce. Pokemon speaks to us in PMD. I'm talking about main series games, not Pokemon's other Pokemon. I'm talking about like Pokemon the humans in like main games and stuff like that. Wait, what's this poodle with an afro? What, the legendary Pokemon here? Apparently some legendary that made like the crops nice and people would like worship it and stuff like that and be loyal, but then they like forgot about him and stuff. And now he's like big sad boy because people forgot about him or something. And now apparently we got to go find his horse. Do we have, okay. I was about to say, do we have the notes update? I just forgot that he told me to speak to the head of the village.